many years now, MH370 families have waited for answers. Many refuse to give up hope of finding their loved ones alive. Others may just want closure. Well, now the Malaysian government is releasing a new report on the lost flight. It held a news conference to explain its findings. 239 people were on board that flight when it took off from Kuala Lumpur in March 2014. It never reached its destination, Beijing. The plane's ultimate fate remains a mystery still today. Let's go to CNN's Will Ripley. He's live from Hong Kong. Hello to you, Will. Uh, what we're learning about this report, is there any significant new information? Sadly, Natalie, and you know, I remember March 8th, 2014, uh, like it was yesterday. It was my first assignment for CNN covering the missing plane. And for weeks on end, we stood there at the airport in Kuala Lumpur, and then we moved to Australia where they were centering the search operations. And there was so much hope in the beginning that they would find the plane, uh, that the, that's, they would detect some sort of a signal from the plane. They, they, they were confident. And here we are now, more than four years later, uh, and there is this report, 495 pages released with absolutely no clues as to as to what may have happened. Um, what investigators have been able to rule out is any obvious signs of anxiety or mental issues on the part of the pilot and the first officer. Uh, they've ruled out any speculation that the pilot's flight simulator at home, which showed he had plotted a course, a simulated course towards the Southern Indian Ocean, which is where MH370 is believed to have crashed, according to the best guess of investigators, looking at radar and satellite imagery and whatnot. Um, they, they say that, that that's not enough to prove that he intended Tended to fly the plane deliberately, but of course his family uh, has had to live for four and a half years with this kind of cloud of suspicion over them. Uh, all of the passengers, 227 passengers, 12 crew members, they looked at meticulously at the backgrounds of everybody on the plane. No indication uh, that anybody would have been capable of, of pulling off something like this, although investigators can't rule out somebody perhaps breaking into the cockpit, switching off the communication systems and turning that plane around right after it checked in at Waypoint Igari, uh, and of course took the plane on that fateful presumed flight to the southern Indian Ocean. Uh, there have been three confirmed pieces of debris from MH370, three pieces of the wing that washed up along uh, the African East Coast, but another 27 pieces of debris have been found that are believed to be highly likely from MH370 as far north as the eastern coast of Tanzania and as far south as the east coast of South Africa. And yet you have all these little pieces of debris, but they haven't found the plane itself, the main uh, wreckage, which of course is the final resting place for those 239 people. So for all of these families who have lived in this state of limbo ever since that day, March 8th, 2014, it seems sadly that that state of, uh, of, of not knowing is going to continue uh, for the foreseeable future. Now, it has to be really a living hell for these families. Uh, and certainly we remember you starting to work for CNN at that time and all your reporting. Will Ripley for us there in Hong Kong. Thank you, Will.